I was asked if I could say a little bit more about what effect it has if you have an image of a deity or a saint or an angel um, either in your house in the form of an icon or a statue for instance or on your body in a ring or a bracelet or a necklace. Well, the first thing we have to consider is, is the object a blessed object or not? And blessing is literally uh, guidance. So it's the object itself being guided by the higher power it represents. And if it is not so, then basically the object is simply an object. But still, an object uh, like this can have a very beneficial effect on you. An object has a certain color, a certain structure, and also you have associations with the object. Like if I see an image of a man, that doesn't generate much effect. But if I see an image of, for instance, uh, Jesus or the Dalai Lama, it is not merely an image of a man, but it brings forth associations. And actually by talking or thinking about something, you activate that energy. So by regularly seeing a certain image, or speaking a certain name, or hearing a certain name, that energy will become activated in your own energy body. And similar energies attract similar energies. So just looking at like a picture of the Dalai Lama will connect me to the Dalai Lama. And similarly, seeing an, yeah, an image of Jesus will also attune me to the energy of Jesus. So even though the object itself may or may not be blessed, through our own energy system, we can use any object to attune. And the same is also true for any other image of a famous person. So, for instance, if you have a movie star uh, whose image you're, you're looking at, also you're, in a way, attuning to that person's energy. So the type of imagery which is around you can have a very strong and profound effect on you. Um, this is also one of the reasons why um, it's often not advised for people to have many images around them uh, which have to do a lot with death and decay and um, uh, other lower vibrations because these lower vibrations can become activated in the body and they can then attract very similar energies. So uh, image is a tool in a way to activate your own energy in body, your own energy system. And whether you are reminded by it by looking at your ring or your necklace or your bracelet or seeing the image outside of yourself, uh, it doesn't really matter that much if it is just an internal process which is helping you to attune yourself to that uh, energy or to that power. It is not always true that merely seeing or hearing something is enough to create a good attunement. If your own memory of that energy is not matching with the reality of it, then you're just like trying to attract something which doesn't exist or you're just connecting yourself to some astral illusion um, because you think that, for instance, a deity is in a certain way and you connect yourself to the illusion you yourself created of that deity. So it is not always a very effective method. Also, the amount of connection depends very much on how deep the effect is on your energy body. Because like if I see it and only mentally it is there for one moment and then it is gone again, um, it is not going to have a lot of effect because also the energy will pop up and disappear before anything has had the chance to happen. When you start experiencing the image on a deeper level, on a more emotional level, or actually really attuning your own willpower to its guidance, then you have a lot more effect, but then it is not enough just merely to glance at it. You should really open yourself up to it and consider it, try to 
feel what it does to you to look at the image of that angel or that saint and then go deeper from a mental level where you have a certain knowledge or certain associations to an emotional level where you maybe can recall times of meditation or times of prayer where you felt their presence quite strongly by going back into that experience level you can recreate the experience recreate the bond you had at that moment and ultimately if you open up your lower chakras then your very desires your way of acting your karma can be transformed by looking at that image or speaking uh, the being's name so so far for the non-blessed objects if an object is blessed it becomes a completely different story a blessed object is in a way an embodiment of that very energy so um, by connecting yourself through your attention to a blessed object that energy will also be able to act upon you um, and this makes also a blessed object a little bit um, tricky because if the object is not blessed you are in a way always the person who is doing it with your own energy body and you can also decide not to do it if an object is blessed then it has more or less a charge and as, as soon as something connects to it that charge will jump over so that energy will jump into the person who is uh, usually touching it merely looking at the blessed object is can be enough to create a connection but usually it is not so the touching indeed of um, holy objects or at least trying to focus a lot of attention there uh, tantric exercises can really help there to create a stronger connection between you and the object of your attention another reason why um, indeed something on the body is a lot more effective this way is because the aura has a lot of filters so it is meant to block energies so energies of even like a very nice blessed object um, some relics of a saint for instance cannot very easily reach me if i'm not open to it if my chakra is and uh, are close to it and my aura is blocking it and this dual protection system of the aura and the chakras um, makes that a lot of the energies simply pass us by we don't even know they exist if an object is however already within our aura the aura cannot filter it out anymore and also if we touch it and um, if we touch it with the place of our body which is open so certain parts of our bodies have no or very little chakra so it's very difficult for the energy to enter into the body but other places where chakras are they are quite open so then the energy can enter into our system quite rapidly and quite deeply so the position of where you wear something you can wear it on the throat chakra or deeper on the heart chakra or even deeper of the third chakra you can also wear it on the forehead for instance and if you are wearing a ring or a bracelet it is usually more through the fingertips and those chakras that we're playing with it or we're doing something else with it which allows us to really open up and attach to that ring the whole fact that we cannot filter out the energy of objects makes them in a certain way also a little bit dangerous or a little bit tricky uh, to wear because they can have effects upon us which we cannot block easily because they are already past our filters so accepting um, especially an object made of stone or metal from somebody you don't know can be a risky thing because um, these objects can carry a lot of energetic charge which can uh, jump over to the person who is wearing it and if a person means harm often that charge will also have a little bit of a um, of a curse or a glamour or something else which will make that object a person's favorite object so they will want to wear it a lot 
and um, it's a little bit like smoking cigarettes. On the one hand it gives you a good feeling, on the other hand it is harming you. And it can be this way with, uh, with cursed objects or with objects which have been blessed but which are not meant for you. Because every blessing has a purpose. It is trying to guide a person in a certain way or in a certain path. So two objects which are actually of the same deity or of the same angel or of the same saint are not identical if they have been blessed differently and usually all objects are blessed in a different manner. Even though the ritual is the same, the energy comes into the object at a certain time, at a certain space, for a certain person and circumstances change, the owner of the object might change but the energy which was embedded in it at the moment of the blessing will uh, usually stay more or less uh, the same. So you always should be very aware of a blessed object, like is this not merely a good object but is this also a good object for me in this current situation at the current time and it requires a little bit more of a choosing because such an object is in a way your energetic food it will influence you it will pull or push your energy body into a certain direction and is that what you need right now so blessed objects are not always preferable to non-blessed objects the, purpose of having blessed objects in the house is also very different from wearing them upon the body. Uh, blessed objects in the house are often used also to create a kind of an, an atmosphere or to drive away negative energies and if they have been blessed for that um, that is quite fine but also you, one thing you should be really aware of is that not all objects really cooperate well. Certain traditions don't mesh well or don't work together well. So every object in itself may be very nice and very good and create a very nice atmosphere in your house, but if you put them together you will get a pandemonium. Um, I'm reminded a little bit of the Chinese symbol for, uh, uh, for an argument. It is a roof, a house and then two times the symbol of a woman is very great if you have a woman in your home um, but if you have two women in your home then there can be jealousy there can be envy there can be uncertainty there can be lots of arguments so having two good things which don't mesh well together can actually make the situation a lot worse and especially with objects which are yeah, meant for the house this can happen quite easily and for objects you wear, usually you don't you put on one object and then you feel a little bit like do I want to put on this necklace too? No, I don't feel like it. So there's more of a feedback as you're putting on the objects one by one. If the situation actually becomes worse for you by the conflicting energies, but in the house it is often a, a hidden problem. Okay, I hope that answers your question. Good luck with your objects.